Good afternoon, I'm Herman Green with the Midday News. A special welcome to those of you watching on OneSpotMedia.com. A reminder as well that you can download our OneSpot Media app in the Google Play Store or the App Store. That's the number one, followed by the word Spot Media. In what could be another marathon sitting, members of the Senate have this morning resumed the clause-by-clause -clause review of the National Identification and Registration Bill. Debate on the bill and the start of the review lasted for 15 hours, ending shortly after 1 o'clock Saturday morning. 19 of the 65 clauses were voted on. The National Identification and Registration Bill seeks to establish a reliable database of Jamaican citizens and other individuals, ordinarily residents in Jamaica, with a unique national identification number as the primary key identifier of the person in the system. Chairman of the Jamaica Coalition for a Healthy Society, Dr. Wayne West, says the organization is still of the opinion that more time is needed for Jamaicans to fully understand the implications of the bill. Dr. West maintains that the government should halt its passage to enable further consultations. It's been a bloody start to the week in Clarendon with the murder of a father and his two sons in Ebony Park Sunday night. Reports are that shortly after 7 o'clock, five gunmen went to a section of the community called Board Villa where they robbed persons at a shop of cash, cell phones and other items. The men then went into a house close by where they robbed, then fatally shot three men, 55-year-old Clifton Scott, better known as Five Cents, and his two sons, 25-year-old Clifton Scott Jr. and 20-year-old Orville Scott. Residents are shocked by the incident, as they say the area is usually peaceful and quiet. TVJ News spoke with counselor for the Yorktown Division, Euphrel Purcell. You can't go in our family and take out three meals out of the family like that. I, the truth must be told is that sometimes you have two or three people in a, in a family, even if one bad, that not say the rest of two or three support that bad person. So you kill off everybody just because of that. No, no, it can't continue like this. Incarcerated don dance hall entertainer Vibes Cartel will have to wait until July next year before the appeal against his life sentence is heard. It has been scheduled for February 19 next year. But following a case, rather it had been scheduled for that date, but following a case management hearing on Tuesday, his attorneys requested more time to prepare the appeal. The hearing is now set to start on July 9. The matter will be heard over three weeks. Cartel was convicted along with Kahira Jones, Andre St. John and entertainer Sean Sean Storm Campbell in 2014 for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams. The four were given life sentences. Cartel will be eligible for parole after 35 years. Rank and file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force are awaiting the outcome of a meeting today to hear whether the government has increased their wage offer for the 2017-2019 contract period. The previous offer of 6% over two years was rejected. The meeting will involve the Finance Ministry and the Police Federation, which has warned that its members are restive over the pace of the wage talks. Chairman of the Federation, Sergeant Raymond Wilson, has stated that if the meeting does not deliver a favorable response, the matter will be taken back to the members to decide the next move. The Federation has hinted that it might not be business as usual if negotiations are not settled ahead of the upcoming festive season. The public sector teachers have given a similar indication over the weekend, warning of possible protest action if the government fails to honor outstanding wage claims. Jamaica Teachers Association President Georgia War Richards has also rejected the government's 6% wage increase offer over two years as unacceptable. After being locked up for more than 24 hours, Omar Ryan, the organizer of the St. Thomas protest, is back in his community and is still appealing to the government for better roads in the parish. Last week, residents blocked several roads in protest over what they say is the deplorable condition of the roads in St. Thomas and the slow action of the authorities to start rehabilitation work. The blocked roads include Lloyd's Pen, the Trinityville Main Road, Grant's Pen, and the Johnson River Bridge. We still want the roads. As you know, the protest was for better road conditions in St. Thomas, generally. Better road networks. We are very much aware that there are some plans to do a certain leg of the highway to Port Antonio. And there are also plans to deal with some other roads. 
But we in St. Thomas, we don't want these to just be plans and announcements. We are really demanding that the authorities that be really put the roads in St. Thomas that we really deserve. To a TVJ News follow-up now, the mayor of Portmore says he has invited Caymanas Track Limited to a meeting following complaints that a recent development is causing flooding in some communities. Earlier this month, a football field, houses, furniture, as well as personal belongings were underwater in Caymanas Gardens. In Christian Gardens, residents were also marooned because of floodwaters. The residents told TVJ News that recent developments at the nearby Caymanas Track has worsened the flooding in the area. The mayor says a recent perimeter wall is at the heart of the problem. The wall that they place there, what they have done is to put some pipes in the wall and take the water from Kimana's truck and dump into the community. The drains that they are putting the water in is too small to carry that water from Kimana's truck. So what I've done is I, I send a letter to Kimana's truck limited inviting them to a meeting and we are going to have a discussion in regarding to that to deal with the situation that exists there. In his letter, he has asked the company to take remedial action. They have to um, close those, those outlets that they have for the time being. And um, what we want to do is to sit with them, have a meeting with them, and if we can, can, can widen the drain, to accommodate that water, then we, we, will, we will do so. And that is what we want to talk to, to them about. Because if they want to put the water in the drain, fine. But we have to do some upgrading on the drain. Meanwhile, a resident of Arakabessa St. Mary is calling for urgent attention after heavy rainfall caused her house to flood. The woman, who gives her name as Kim, lives off the coastal highway in the race course and says... Water started to seep into her house sometime after 8 Sunday morning. It damaged her furniture along with other items. She says the situation is a recurring one. According to her, the problem started after a highway was built a few years ago. So we have to build up here to keep out the water. But so it goes. Or if we rain a little more, then we still have the water in the house. See the whole pond lot over here? This is Mr. Muffin Santis land. The, water, the road is built slant, so all the water is coming in. It goes nowhere else away from in my yard. She wants the government to help. I'm broke. He cannot do anything. So I would like for Andrew Olness, what's his name? Bobby Montague to come down here and do something. Then come then the channel ain't nothing being done differently water still coming in i was pregnant here a few years ago fire brigade have to come and, be, and bring my bring me outside it's not funny i'm tired of this living it is not healthy it is not comfortable at all concerns are being raised about the lack of proper street lights along several roads in the crofts hill moko and hayes division in clarendon Councillors for the divisions raised the concerns during a recent Clarendon Municipal Corporation meeting where one councillor noted that up to 90% of the streetlights in the entire parish are not working. Councillor for the Crofts Hill Division, Anthony O'Connor, lamented that poorly lit roads are contributing to an increase in criminal activities. Crime is not just about Napier no more and Hills and your first road. No, in the hills, from Thompson Town, from Moko. In Cross City, we had a shooting two weeks ago. So it is spreading your worship into the rural parts. And as I said, when it's dark, it's dark. In the meantime, Councillor for the Hayes Division, Cian Barnswell, is urging the government to assist with getting some new lights installed in the parish. We meet our target three consecutive years in property tax collection. But yet still we have not seen any street that been installed throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica. Let us not forget, Mr. Chairman, that Clarendon ran the second highest parish with murder. And when you look at his, my division, which we have in serious challenges there, section of Central Clarendon, Farm in particular, we have in similar challenges. I think the time has come for the people to start to see where the public tax dollars is going. 
Superbugs that are resistant to antibiotics. This number has been predicted to rise to 10 million by 2050. To prevent the infection from being an epidemic, the World Health Organization, WHO, has implemented a World Antibiotic Awareness Week. Chief Veterinarian Officer at the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Dr. Osbill Watson, and Chief Medical Officer in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Winston Delahaye, was speaking on TVJ Smile Jamaica on Monday about Jamaica's plans to, aware, to make the public aware on the issue. We have more in this report. If you visit the doctor for an infection, chances are you'll be prescribed antibiotics. But Chief Medical Officer Dr. Winston Delahaye says 20 to 50 percent of prescribed antibiotics are unnecessary and many doctors have developed a bad habit of prescribing the medication on the request of patients. Uh, patients also come in asking for them and so what we recommend is that physicians stick to guidelines, there are clear guidelines in managing any, any medical illness and in so doing uh, that helps. But, but the public also has a responsibility. So. When we prescribe you antibiotics for a week, let's say, we recommend that you, con you continue for the, to the end of the week mm. as opposed to leaving a little. You know, we're a culture where you say, well, you know, you're having a little sniffles. I use this last take month take, and they take it. He also advised against sharing or overusing antibiotics, which he knows can help to develop a superbug infection, which is a viral infection caused by bacteria that are resistant to common antibiotics. In fact, the World Health Organization, WHO, says at least 700,000 people around the world die from superbug infections. Chief Veterinarian Officer in the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries, Dr. Osbill Watson, says the problem is not unique to humans. He pointed to the practice of farmers using antibiotics to boost the growth of their animals. Antibiotic pretty much was added to the feed to enhance um, early development, you know, rapid development of, of, of the carcass. So it, it was not used to treat a disease. It was just mm. used to ensure that the, the, the bird or the pig develops um, in a much shorter period of time. And there is more. Dr. Watson says antibiotics also affect food safety because once bacteria starts to resist the drug, it can spread from animals to humans and vice versa. These bacteria are shared. Wow. And so these resistant bacteria getting into the human food chain mm -hmm. uh, by some means, either by direct contact with the animal or through In consuming mm -hmm. the food or um, contamination of the environment. Yeah actually results in a person getting ill, going to the doctor, and, and cannot be treated because, the, because the, 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 ant the antibiotic does not work anymore. Right. He's encouraging farmers to use the drug only when it is prescribed by a veterinarian, even as he notes that his ministry is taking steps to ensure that antibiotics are not used as a growth promoter in the agriculture sector. Krista Campbell, TVJ News. We go on to sports. Defending champions Arnett Gardens in a top-of-the-table clash with last season's beaten finalist Portmore United were held to a nil-all draw in the Red Stripe Premier League at Prison Oval on Sunday. Arnett remains atop of the table on 19 points after five wins and four draws ahead of Portmore on 17 points. First and second place team, um, even the first match first half, but I think we had the better chances um, at the end of the day. Um, something we have to rectify. I mean, it's not no crisis, but we should have finished our, um, our chances that we got. Um, what was important for me today is that Arnett didn't break us down and um, we nullify what they threw at us. So that was important, but we'll take our point and move on to the next game. Um, today's game, um, pretty much high tempo for both teams. Um, it, it was also very physical. But, you know, despite that, the, the best player on the pitch today was Damon Hyatt. He came up big on numerous occasions. But, you know, overall, you know, we, we created, you know, just a few chances. But the clear-cut chance in the whole game, you know, was Vishnu Laris, in which, you know, I was so surprised when he didn't convert. But playing away from home, it's, it's a good result. And that wraps up the Midday News. I'm Herman Green. Join us at 7 for the Primetime News Package. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, good afternoon.